everybody. I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is the balance wheel and inertia and this frequency. And, and this comes from sort of a series of questions that I encountered when I found that all of these top <clears throat> watchmakers were using a frequency below uh, 4 hertz. In fact, they were below two, uh, 3 hertz, uh, around 18,000 uh, vibrations per, per hour. So um, I want to start off with trying to make a connection between the pendulums and the swing of the pendulum and the movement of the of your balance wheel. So let's start with that first. Okay, we got uh, two different lengths here on on two pendulums, and and the longer one takes more time to go through what we'll call an oscillation. In other words, for it to swing out and then swing back again, the entire process is takes longer than the shorter one okay I've I've attached a piece of tape uh, and this is another way that I'm going to to make a pendulum the pendulum will just swing you can see it there that tape just think of the tape as the pendulum swinging back and forth okay all right Okay, um, what I wanted to do with that video was to sort of sort of connect up the swing of a pendulum and the spinning of a balance wheel. Now, here this little black thing rep represents a pendulum. And, and when we talk about VPH, vibrations per hour, we're really talking about oscillations. And in fact, we're not talking about real oscillations, we're talking about semi-oscillations. The balance wheel, when it spins, it doesn't spin 360 degrees. I think it's something like 280 degrees or something like that. Very much like a pendulum. A pendulum doesn't go like that. A pendulum swings back and forth. Same is true with a balance wheel. They get out to a point and the hairspring sends it back and then it gets to the next point and gets a kick from the uh, fork and back and forth it goes. And the question that I have is, is, is sort of intrigued me. And there's a lot of really simple-minded answers and they, they they didn't make any sense, okay? Popularity doesn't mean excellence necessarily. It simply means something is popular and it may work perfectly well and it great and everything. And the, I guess the, the big question I had is, is what's going on here? And uh, in, in looking at the, uh, this particular boot and lawn, and you can see at the bottom how big that balance wheel is and it's it's something what the the inertia the bigger the the bigger the balance wheel the greater the inertia which means the less influence from outside forces and if you if you turn it around and you turn it to different directions and so forth it has to some extent the movement like this acts not exactly like a gyroscope, uh, but it does have this kind of torque that it has. And of course, but it's going both ways, and so you don't have it turning constantly. Uh, but on the other hand, it does move the center point slightly. Uh, one of the, this uh, particular watch, this is a, um, H. Moser, Henry Hairspring, and what they decided to do is to have a one of them with a double uh, hairspring was one of them move one way and one move the other, 
and so the swinging of it wouldn't wouldn't pull the this the pivot point for the balance wheel off and and it proved it didn't i mean compared to compared to other things you see break a uh, twist on t on a uh, spring or the Grossmann uh, curve uh, also helped prevent it. But the thing that really worked was that double hair spring because it basically uh, offset the torque. Um, so this was sort of an interesting thing. Now, here's why it's interesting. Most watches, and most watches I have too, don't have that big of a hairspring. They have, uh, not hairspring, but um, balance wheels. Uh, here, I mean, Lutlan has got this huge one, and it, and we do know from the physics of it that this, the greater the inertia, the better off you're going to be in terms of stability. If you look at uh, pictures of um, tightrope walkers, they have those big long poles and they're holding them right in the middle. And what it, what it does is that the inertia of that long, long pole allows the tightrope tight walker to stay in the tightrope. Is that, you know, so wind comes up or one thing or the other jiggles the, the line, their own movement included. The big pole, the inertia from that big pole helps keep them steady and the idea is that a larger balance wheel does the same thing and they even add weights to it to to give it almost perfect balance and increase the inertia at the same time it's uh <laughs> so the question i had was well why doesn't everybody use that if it's if it's such a good thing and i still have it, don't have the answer uh, this is something I, there, there are a lot of, like I said, there are a lot of, like, bam, oh, well, this is why they do it this way. Now, along with that, you have a lower frequency. So the turning, when, you're, when your wheel turns, it takes longer for it to rotate because it's bigger. And you, it, it, has, it has higher inertia. So you got this big thing that's moving around, just like I showed with the... Um, with the pendulums that you the longer they are the the different amount of time that it's going to take for them to make a semi oscillation if you will and the same thing here if you got a the bigger the wheel that let's say coming out here it's going to take a longer time now this is a you know again we're, we're dealing with what are effectively rigid objects but we also know that some points if we compare the two points if we put a point here and a point here is that the point here moves slower than the point out here and so if you have it even further out you're if you slow it down i mean if you use a slower frequency uh your your movement out here could can your oscillations or semi oscillations can keep in time with the movement of the escapement that forwards the the wheels that move the hands okay so what's what's going on how how come how come everyone doesn't use it? i'm going to start with this um this is a parmigiani and I'm trying to you see the the it has a relatively small balance wheel uh, but it's a pretty, it moves right along at uh, 28.8 uh, vibrations per minute or per hour. And it keeps good time and, it, and it's running a bunch of other stuff along with it. It's got, uh, in fact, it's a dual timer, uh, plus it has a dual uh, night and day, plus it has a, a, a date uh, that it keeps going to. Why is that? I mean, we, why don't they say, look, you know, we'd, we'd rather have a little more stability. Well, there are all of these trade-offs that are going on. Uh, when you have a larger wheel, you need more power uh, to kick the thing around. And so that means a bigger mainspring. 
better balance, the better the balance, the easier it is to swing it around. So you have this really a well-balanced uh, system. And then when you have a larger balance wheel and you add some weights to the end of it, you got you know a huge amount of stability. Uh, other things though, well, one way to maintain accuracy using a smaller balance wheel is to, to increase the speed. And so you see on these, on the ones with a higher frequency, you can get away with a smaller balance wheel. They're turning faster, they're making more semi-oscillations uh, than one with a bigger one. And again, I keep coming back to the question of, you know, why not? You know, why would you do that? Uh, here's a Beauvais, and uh, here's here's a real one. <laughs> and you look at the balance wheel on this one. Now, this one runs at 3 hertz, which is 26.6 uh, uh, thousand vibrations per hour. And you can see here, and it's, and it's hard to really tell, uh, because my finger's right on it. That's the balance wheel. Now it's bigger than some of these other ones, but the this is a this is a great big movement in here, and so it's relative to that movement. One of the other interesting things that I found was that in uh, one of his watches, in, in fact, all of them, Kerry Boot and Lonnen put the size of the balance wheel, and his was. It was 13 millimeters, a little over 13 millimeters. It's a very good size. You take it up for a big movement, a good hefty size movement. We're talking 33 millimeters, and that's a big one, uh, like uh, the one that's uh, in this guy right here. I mean, this thing, <laughs> this is a 42 millimeter watch, and you can see that the movement fills the whole thing up almost. So uh, here you you have that other question is that well if you got a if you have a bigger movement uh you can put in a much bigger wheel but not everybody does that uh the the top guys are doing it but not everyone else some of the very best ones too some of them have that slower that two and a half hertz movement and they're using um they're they're still using a a smaller uh, uh, balance wheel. Now this one is in a a, a Lang and Hein. Uh, they get and all of the Lang and Heinz run at uh, two and a half. I think all of them do, or most of them do, run at two and a half hertz or sixteen hundred and uh, sixteen thousand six hundred revolution uh, uh semi oscillations per hour now here you can see there's a lot of fancy stuff going on but in there you can you can see this a good size balance wheel with the weights on it and adding the weights you add the greater inertia with the thing spinning back and forth and uh so again uh, this is another example of where you, another kind of watch uh, maker who sees that as important too. And then of course there's all of the folder, all of the engraving and so forth with it. All right, well, um, like I said, this is, a, this is a lot different than a lot of the other videos I do, but I was, I found it, to, and I'm still wondering why. And here's, you know, a guy like uh, Kerry Boot and Lon and he, wins every prize I think they, they can give you in uh, watchmaking. He's got beautiful watches. People line up to pay $100,000 a piece for them. And since they have those big balance wheels, so, you know, they, how difficult would it be for other companies to do that? And, and I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's cheaper but it couldn't be that much cheaper i mean you're just talking about there's all of these little wheels so it's still to me part of a mystery but the main reason that i can see in it in a, in a very practical way 
is that you have something that can be turned at all of these all of these different positions and spinning back and forth which has at least some gyro effect now not everything but it does uh, you can even feel it just in doing something like this moving it back and forth so you do get some stability out of it something uh, very much like your opinion on now remember be careful about simple explanations be very careful and think these things through uh because i i'm <laughs> that's the first thing i went for was something nice and simple and clear but uh it turned out it wasn't wasn't as clear as i thought it was and it, the more you look into it the more interesting it gets at least it was for me i keep looking at the physics of it and my college physics it was that sort of a what should have happened and why why you have this in particular this small group of uh, top class watchmakers uh, see the same thing by the way too I, I'm having on my uh, uh, FP Jean they run at uh, three Hertz also this one what is it uh, 20 thousand six hundred something like that uh vibrations per hour okay well um that's it for today and uh like i said i'll be back in my regular digs when by the time you see this so <laughs> i'd like to get your feedback and any ideas you have and and especially you know for those of you from you know the science and engineering background maybe you can help clear it up make it a little clearer for me but remember, keep the empirical aspect in mind. In other words, why uh, here you still have this, these top-notch people doing that. Usually when you have somebody at the top doing it, the other ones follow. Uh, but that's not, that's not the case here. Okay. Well, uh, as always, this is an invitation to subscribe if you'd like. And until next week, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watch Collection.